Welcome to the Underwater Filming Tips series. My name is Vanessa Karake, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about ISO or ISO. This is going to be the third part of the exposure series. In the first episode, we talked about shutter speed. In the second, we talked about aperture. And now we're going to be talking about ISO. And just so you know, ISO stands for International Standards Organization. It's nothing you need to know but that's what it stands for. So what is ISO? ISO comes from the analog film time when you used to go to your local camera store and buy these little Kodak films with 36 images. And when you bought those film rolls, you could decide in what ISO sensitivity you wanted to buy them in. For example, 100, 200, 400 or 800 ISO or even higher than that. So for bright daylight, you would choose ISO 100 or 200. For indoor situations or low light situations like sunset, you would get ISO 400 or 800. And if you would shoot in even darker conditions, you would get even higher ISO sensitivities. ISO is the film sensitivity to light. And nowadays, with digital cameras, ISO is the sensitivity of your camera sensor to light. Essentially, it's the same, just digital. A low ISO number means your camera sensor is less sensitive to light. So you will have a clearer image, you will introduce less noise, and you will darken down your image. So you will bring your exposure down. A higher ISO value means your camera sensor is going to be more sensitive to light. So your image will be brighter, you're going to bring your exposure up. This is really great because it's going to allow you to shoot in low light conditions. But it's going to introduce more noise, more grain to your image. You might have heard someone already say, this is a great camera for low light conditions or this is a great low light camera. This means you can have a really high ISO value without introducing too much noise to your image. But of course, this totally depends on the camera model, the camera manufacturer and the sensor size. Sony cameras, for example, are really well known for good low light capabilities. And other manufacturers like Panasonic, for example, are known to be not as good in low light situations. It totally depends on your camera model. So if you're interested in knowing if your camera model is good in low light situations, we'll just do a quick research online and there's gonna be plenty of information on that. With my camera, the Panasonic GH5, not the GH5S, I don't go beyond 1600 ISO because after that, you start to introduce a lot of noise into the image. But with Sony cameras, you can go up to 6400 without introducing noise or even beyond that, depending on the camera type. So why do you need ISO and why do you have to change it? And how do you change it for underwater video? You may need to adjust the ISO for proper exposure. Now you may think, why do I need to change the ISO? I can change the exposure with my shutter speed and aperture like we learned in the previous episodes. Well, sure, you can, but there are restrictions to that. There are going to be situations where you set your shutter speed and your aperture to what you want them to be, and then you'll be under or overexposed. And that's where ISO comes into play. You can check the exposure of your image on the back of your camera on the LCD screen or in the viewfinder. There's a little electronic light meter that usually goes from minus three to zero to plus. Three. You want to have your exposure set right in the middle at zero. Each of these numbers is one stop of light. If you don't know what a stop of light is, go and check out the previous episode where we talk about aperture and there we explain everything. We're going to have a whole episode on exposure, on how to check your exposure and what tools you can use to check your exposure. But for now, just try to stick to zero on your exposure scale. Above water, it's a bit more simple. If you're overexposed, you can use ND filters, neutral density filters. We talked about them in the shutter speed episode. Underwater, the whole thing gets a bit more tricky. So if you don't want to change your shutter speed or your aperture underwater, the simplest way to dial down your exposure is to bring down the ISO value. So how do you choose the proper ISO value for underwater filmmaking? I'm going to give you an insight in how I set the ISO underwater. Others might do it totally different and that's fine. So the first thing that I would do is set my camera to the base ISO, to the native ISO. Every camera has a native ISO. You can check that online, what that is for your camera. This basically means it's the ISO value where your camera performs best and where your image is the clearest. With my camera, it's ISO 200. So you may think ISO 100 is the lowest setting, that means it's the clearest image. Well, 
With digital cameras, this is not always the case. So just check online what the best ISO setting is for your camera. And then I'll set my shutter speed to be double my frame rate because of the 180 degree shutter angle rule. Usually I film in 60 frames a second, so my shutter speed will be 1 over 120 or 120 of a second. And actually I have all of these settings already dialed into my custom function buttons. We talked about custom function buttons in the shutter speed episode. And then I determine what look I want to achieve. Do I want to have the background in focus? Do I want to have the background out of focus? Am I shooting an underwater landscape? Am I concentrating on a fish, a marine creature? So do I want to have a shallow depth of field or a deeper depth of field as we talked about in the aperture episode? So depending on the depth of field, I will set the according aperture. And with these two settings dialed in, the aperture and the shutter speed, I will check my exposure. So if I'm overexposed, I will bring down my ISO. And if I'm underexposed, I will bring up my ISO value. And as I mentioned with my camera, I don't go beyond 1600 ISO because I'm gonna to introduce too much noise, too much grain in the image. And there are some situations where we'll go beyond 1600 ISO just to get the specific shot. If you're using underwater video lights, try increasing the video light power first before increasing your ISO because then you will have a clearer image and you will introduce less noise. At least this is what I do. And it depends on the marine environment and what I'm filming. Sometimes I I may decide not to increase the light power and instead increase the ISO. Because if you're filming macro and sensitive marine life, you don't want to blast two times 12,000 loom into the poor faces of these creatures. You have to respect the environment you're filming in. So if I do have a tiny little creature, I will really try to avoid increasing the light power. I will first increase the ISO. And if I maxed out the ISO value and I cannot go any higher because it's going to be just too noisy, then I will open up the aperture. That means I'm going to bring the exposure up even more. And if all of that doesn't help, then I will try to slowly increase the light power. But be aware that when you increase the light power, power too much, you're going to scare off the marine creatures. If you filmed in a high ISO setting and introduced a lot of grain and noise to your image, you can always use a denoiser in post-production. But let me tell you, denoisers are a real pain. I mean, denoisers are great, they work fantastic, but they use so much computer power. So they're really going to slow down all your editing process and rendering and exporting process. So try to get the clearest image you can underwater and try not to solve it in post. If you do have one or two clips that are too noisy, then sure, you can use a denoiser for those. But if you have to denoise your whole footage, it's going to be a real, real pain. And with stills, it's a lot easier to get rid of the noise because you're only editing one shot. But with film, the noise actually moves around in the image and it's a lot harder to get rid of it. If you overdo the denoising with video, then the image is going to look really soft and strange and unnatural. With photography, you can actually set the ISO to automatic mode. Some cameras have a semi-automatic mode where you can set a range from the lowest to the highest ISO and the camera will choose the according ISO in that range. You could choose the range of ISO 100 to ISO 1600 and then the camera would choose the specific ISO within that range to get the proper exposure. But for filmmaking, you have to set the ISO manually. You don't want to have the camera changing the ISO value during the recording process. That's going to totally mess up your shot because the camera is going to try to expose your image properly. You're going to see how the exposure changes in your shot. But if you want to step up your filmmaking game, then I would recommend you to set the ISO manually. What can you do when you're filming in a darker situation, like you're filming a cave or a rock in the shadow, and then you're filming up towards the surface? If you want to have a more cinematic look and not a point and shoot or action camera look, my recommendation would be just to cut the scene. So you film the darker scene with a high ISO value and then you cut and then you reset the ISO to a lower ISO value and then you film the brighter part of the scene. In the editing process, you can just cut the darker and the brighter scene together. And this method is totally legit. Nobody's gonna wonder 
why is there a curtain in the scene? Why didn't you pan from the darker scene to the brighter scene? This has been done all the time. If you absolutely need to get the shot from the darker to the brighter scene, of course you can set it to automatic ISO or to shutter priority or to aperture priority mode, depending on what works best for that scene. But the more professional way would be to do it with the cut. So try it out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share it. And I have a little question for you. We're going to be talking about a lot of different things in this series, but if there's any topic that you're really interested in and want us to cover, leave a comment below. Safe diving and I will hopefully see you in the next episode. That's it. Bye.